Welcome everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining us in the second webinar in our climate finance webinar series. Uh, this webinar we are talking about how you keep your audiences engaged in climate action during these volatile times or should you even keep your audiences engaged during these on climate action when they may, maybe have other things that they're concerned about right now. Um, before we get started, I just want to do a couple of logistics for you. You are all on mute, um, but please feel free to send any questions through that you have on the chat button, and we will uh, answer questions during the conversation. This is very much designed to be a conversation. Uh, we've kept to our promise of uh, limited, in fact, no PowerPoint slides other than the sort of basics of who we are. So uh, we're very much looking forward to to answering any questions or to any comments you have as we go through this session. So please do keep those coming in. Um, and there will be a recording of this webinar made available to everyone afterwards. Um, before uh, the other thing, of course, I want to appreciate you know, everyone's working from home a little bit different. So I think we've all got ourselves, our, the three of us, uh, uh, set up so that nice and quiet, but you will forgive us if a child comes through the background or if uh, there's some background noise. I think we're all going through rather a big shift in our working practices and all learning uh, quite a different way of um, interacting with each other and seeing the sort of more human side of everyone's uh, everyone's lives, the more personal side, not least our home decor where appropriate. So with that, um, let me first of all introduce our uh, two guests today. So first of all, we have Dana Jennings, who's the Senior Project Manager of Global Sustainability at LinkedIn, and Dana's joining us from the West Coast. And secondly, of the West Coast of the US, should I say, uh, we have Solly Solitaire Townsend, who's the co-founder of Futera, who's joining us from Bristol, and I'm in London. So um, I just thought I'd let Solly and Dana say a quick introduction and background about themselves before we uh, get into the meat of our conversation. Dana, why don't you go first? Great, thanks Rebecca. So my name is Dana Jennings. I work at LinkedIn as the Senior Project Manager for Sustainability. And part of my role oversees employee engagement. So running the employee green teams and um, making sure employees are aware of everything that we're doing and how they can get involved. So I'm really excited to be on this panel today to talk about the um, delicate balance between what's happening in the world and continuing our focus on sustainability as well. So thank you. Great, thank you. Brilliant. So um, hello, thank you, Rebecca. It's lovely to meet Dana as well. Also noticing that all of us need to start wearing our glasses in our official photographs. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's, it's brilliant to be here. So I'm the co-founder of Futera. For those who don't know Futera, and I know there are some of our clients um, online, for those who don't know Futera, we're a change agency, we're 19 years old, um, 70 people around the world, about 40 of whom are in the UK, um, uh, the rest in the US, primarily uh, New York, in Stockholm, in Sweden and in Mexico City. And we're a logic magic agency, a hybrid agency. So one half of our agency does things such as work with Formula One to help them go uh, net zero or white Google's circularity strategy. And the other half of our agency is a creative agency. So creating the Wild for Life wildlife campaign for the UN or Whiter Future, the social purpose campaign for Lancome. Um, and uh, and yes, my entire life and bread and butter and how we work is sustainability. So it's very interesting times right now. Great, thank you very much, both of you. And just to sort of talk a little bit about Natural Capital Partners and our approach before we get into our first poll, um, we are a, a company that helps businesses to achieve their carbon emission reduction goals, whether that's uh, carbon neutrality or net zero and so on, through primarily carbon offset programs. And we have obviously, I think we all know that the climate conversation is somewhat more muted right now. Um, but the need for action hasn't diminished. That's still uh, a priority for everyone. But we're taking this opportunity, this time when um, climate is a little bit more you know, subdued as a conversation, though not the urgency, to reflect and learn. And that's why we've created this 
this webinar series on climate finance um, and we're putting together things for you know next week we've we've just launched an earth day quiz for people to just try and keep gently that conversation going whilst people are uh, adapting to a, a very different world around us um, some we have noticed that some launches of the bigger initiatives by our clients have been uh, put on hold. They're not going to make major announcements right now, and we'll talk about that a bit later because I know Solly has seen some slightly different attitudes towards that. But some of those big initiatives might not be being, being announced right now. But clients are really trying to find the right balance, is what we've seen, and they're looking for examples of best practice. What do we do? What are other businesses doing? When, when do we say? What do we say? How do we? Say say it and it will be really interesting I think on this conversation to hear what you know Dana and LinkedIn are thinking about and how they're approaching it with their employees and also examples of what Solly is seeing from their client base of you know how people are approaching those discussions and you know the approach of you know you, we've got to help our teams focus on what they can control when there's this whole other thing going on outside them which we can't control and how do you sort of tap into that with the climate conversation um, so with that I think we're going to move to our first poll uh, so we'd like everyone to give us their responses to uh, these four questions what is your company's approach to communicating about climate action at this time do you feel it's very important it continues is it, are you presenting it as a welcome distraction from COVID-19 news and therefore something that, you know, fits into communications and employees welcome or audiences or your audience might welcome? You don't have time to engage with climate action communica communications at the moment. There's just your business is totally distracted on other issues or you don't think it's appropriate to be talking about climate right now. So if you can let us know your responses to that, it'll be interesting to see what you're all thinking. And here we've got the majority, actually I just need to move something out of the way so I can see it properly. So the majority feel it is very important it continues, which is great. That's good for, um, I think, Solly and Dana and I to have, you know, to, uh, to have something to talk about now. So the majority think it's very important it continues. Um, not very many think it's a welcome distraction, but you know, a much smaller number thinking they don't really have time or it's not appropriate. Uh, so that's excellent, thank you very much. So moving back, so my first question, Solly, over to you. Um, first question for you. When it comes to your clients, what are they asking you to help them with at the moment? What are the things that they, as they debate this world, what are they, what are they looking to Futera for assistance on? Well, um, it's a great question, and it's been an extraordinary, fascinating, horrifying, challenging um, few weeks and months. Um, I think one of the first things that clients are looking for is a sense of solidarity and connection to our community. So honestly, I'm having a lot of almost co-counselling sessions with people at the moment, um, which I think is absolutely right. But in terms of the practicalities of what people are doing, I would say there's three things which um, we're being asked for, which is about preparing, using this time to do some really strong preparation for after this time. And then one thing that people are doing, which is actually something which is happening right now. So in terms of the preparing, we've got lots of people who are working on their big announcements. You know, we, we were going to have COP26 this year. It's 2020. A lot of people's um, uh, cycle of their commitments are coming to an end. And so a lot of people are preparing their big announcements. And with all love and respect, sometimes those things get a little bit hairy towards the end and it's all very hectic because you're getting stuff signed off and socialized so this actually just gives a proper time to do proper socialization really make those announcements robust second thing that we're doing a lot of with people is working on brand purpose brand purpose is really hard it's very challenging and a lot of organizations are looking at either the brands in their portfolio or their overall brand purpose and wondering whether it is fit for purpose whether their brand is fit for purpose in the current 
situation and what's going to go ahead. So we're revisiting a lot of brand purposes um, uh, in consumer goods, but actually in B2C, in B2B companies as well. And the third, obviously, is staff engagement. Like we're doing a great deal of training sessions, of lunch and learns, of talks. I've got a talk coming up with the vice internal um, team. Um, lots of sessions for boards on everything you wanted to ask about sustainability and never had the time. <laughs> so lots. those are the three things which people are doing. They're really using this time. The fourth thing which people are doing or beginning to do is realizing that the outside world, consumers, public citizens are still interested in these topics, but the interest has shifted slightly. So honesty and helpfulness are the two main ways I would say that companies are looking to communicate around these issues, um, particularly on climate. So honesty, all birds are still out there. They made their big announcement today about going carbon neutral in their supply chain. So did HelloFresh. So lots of really good transparency and honesty communications continuing about climate change. The helpfulness comes from realizing that if you look on Google Trends, which shows you how, what the world is searching for, you'll notice that things such as how do I compost has gone through the roof. Things such as how do I reuse has gone through the roof. A lot of actually sustainable behaviours, things which would be behaviours that would be looking for consumers to take from a sustainability perspective, actually people are really searching for right now. So what a lot of FMCG clients are doing, what some fashion clients are doing, what some um, tech clients are doing, is actually looking for ways to be helpful to the consumer, as a lot of us are changing our behaviours and could do with some help with that. I think what's interesting there as well, when you said about people like, you know, companies like Allbirds making an announcement about their supply chain, is that actually fits in very well to what everyone is thinking about right now, because it's about resilience, it's about adaptation, you know, and, so, and regeneration and sort of thinking about, because supply chains have been so, and have been and will be so impacted by this, it actually is bringing the two things together, you know, in a very sensible, sensible way, I would say. And um, in fact, one of the big sectors, of course, is food on this, but that might be a conversation for later on, but it's such a huge conversation right now. And um, Solly, you mentioned there about internal engagement, which I think is a perfect lead into the, my first question for you, Dana, which is how much are you continuing to talk to your teams about your climate programme and what are you finding are the or the ways or thinking about the ways which is appropriate to engage with teams when they've got other things on their mind and they're also you know in very different locations now yeah that's a great question um and so i would start out by saying that i agree with kind of the focus on solidarity and connectivity that Solly mentioned and i honestly you know the first couple of weeks of the transition were shocking, but for me personally and for a lot of people. And so I think we sort of just sat back to see what was happening. Um, and then now as we get closer to Earth Day, which is coming up next Wednesday, and people are sort of realizing that we're this is the new reality, at least for a while, I think that we've kind of come out of that moment of shock and are ready to continue the conversation. And so I think the main thing is focusing on the the reality and the context that people are in right now. So a good example is for a couple of months, we've been planning a big employee engagement initiative for Earth Day called Eco Challenge, which is going to you know, bring together all of our global offices in one environmental challenge and encourage new behavior with actions that align with our corporate goals. Everything was set up perfectly and then this happened. And so now we've realized this is actually a really great tool to bring that solidarity and connectivity back as people are all in their own homes. And so it's a virtual platform. We've just had to shift the actions. So for example, where we had actions on, um, you know, taking public transit to the office, that's not relevant. So we've switched those out and we've added things that people can do at home. And um, similar to what Solly said with people sort of, I don't want to say people have more time, but there's a little bit more of a quiet, reality now and so people are looking at like how do i compost what can i do around my own home can i switch out light bulbs so we've added in actions that people can take in their own homes and so they can participate and really focused on how this can connect teams that are now spread out in different homes and different sites and um do it in a really kind way that doesn't add stress right like you can opt into what you want to do it's not a big 
competition. It's more about just participating and feeling connected. So um, we're launching that this Friday. We already have over a thousand employees who have signed up in advance. So I know it's kind of a good outlet for people to feel connected to each other as we all are isolated. And I think it's in that that's interesting that point you make about not adding stress that you know one of the things I think we're you know we're sort of everyone's working on here is and I agree with you completely after those first first two weeks when I don't think anyone dared talk about anything other than the pandemic it has you know rather strangely settled into our sort of slightly business as usual working differently and with this other big thing going on around us so then you could see it up you know a week or so ago then two weeks ago maybe the discussion about climate started to stick its head above the parapet again but it is important when you're trying to you know talk to people about what they can do to to fit it in with where they are which is you know still obviously feeling anxious and worried about you know what's going to happen when and exit strategies for lockdowns and all of those things that are being discussed. So um, what do you, Solly, what do you think are some of the appropriate messages at the moment that, that do that, that tread that balance? What do you think are some of the things that can work at the moment? So um, I just want to really reflect on what Dana said about kindness. I think whether that's a specific message or whether that's a um, a frame and optic we bring to everything which we talk about at the moment. Um, uh, really, really being aware that whoever you come on board with, wherever your audiences are, um, you don't know what situation they're in. You don't know what's going on in people's lives and people's family lives. That, by the way, was always the case but it's become absolutely front and center for us now, which is everybody to approach each other with kindness. So that would be the first one. A Couple of things which we're seeing is um, resilience. The need for us to rebuild and recover with resilience is absolutely um, core. We see that in the green recovery letter that went from a set of uh, European MEPs and businesses to the to the EU, um, I think earlier this week, calling for a, 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 the focus of the recovery and rebuilding to be around um, making sure we're resilient against future shocks, particularly climate ones. So I think that word is absolutely core. Um, and uh, solidarity being the other core. A lot of us um, have rediscovered our sense of solidarity, shall we say, with um, with uh, those around the world who are, who are experiencing the same um, so he's, and even with the natural world. Um, and I think that perhaps um, perhaps one of the big learnings from uh, from this period is that the climate conversation had become somewhat cold very much dominated by the uh, by the technical lots of 350 parts per million 2030 net zero uh, 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 stats and facts and that we'd lost this the sense of the, the emotional connection sense the hope the solidarity the connection to the natural world and that actually all of those are proving very popular and one of the things that if you tell that we do is we watch what's trending online particularly around, um, around climate. And there seems to be two major things which are happening. In fact, New York Times covered it today as well. One is some very unpleasant messages around climate and COVID as humanity as a virus, um, COVID being a way to get rid of boomers, et cetera. So, so there is some really, really unpleasant stuff that's out there, actually disgusting, honestly. Um, but there's also a huge amount of love of the natural world, huge, huge, huge numbers of people posting uh, photographs from green spaces. There is uh, NGOs who are giving uh, webcam access to green spaces, seeing two, three, 50 times the um, the numbers who would usually access that. So I think that there's, as well as what we should be saying right now, which is around solidarity, um, around climate and how our recovery needs to be resilient to um, future shocks, particularly climate. There's also some deeper learnings we can take around this about the power of positivity, hope and kindness in our communication, rather than some of the slightly colder technical communication that we're perhaps used to around climate change. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Dana, how are you finding that in terms of your messaging with your sort of, you know, having to move the practicalities of your eco fair to people's home lives and so on? But how are you finding, have you had to change your messaging at all? And how have you sort of adapted that? Um, yeah, I think a little bit. I think, you know, at first we were 
viewing this as sort of like, hey, uh, we need your help. Help us achieve our corporate goals. You're part of this program. And then realizing that, um, you know, we need your help is not an appropriate tagline right now because there are much more dire situations out there. And so just kind of switching that tagline over to, um, you know, join us on our journey and, you know, unite together. So sort of shifting the messaging like that for sure. And then um, speaking for LinkedIn more broadly as a platform, I think just being aware that um, a lot of people are on our platform right now from job losses, right? And, and looking at the economic impacts and being very sensitive to what members are going through right now um, is also a really important topic for um, us to be aware of. So I think there's a lot there for sure. It was, um, it was interesting, Solly, when you said about the kindness thing as well. I, you know, that whole, you know, and those, those, particularly in those early weeks when people, you'd have calls with people, but at the end of calls, people were saying, "Oh, stay well and stay healthy." And it was, you know, it was a very big shift in how, in that sort of sense of how you communicated with people that you might have communi you know, spoken to daily for years and but suddenly there was this real sort of sense of wanting to wish the best for people and so on which was actually a is actually a very lovely shift in how we interact with one another I think um so Solly can you can you give us are there some, from the work that you're doing now and what you're seeing if you what are some good examples you're seeing of things that uh, clients are doing and you know and how they're communicating their and their sort of climate and sustainability programs at the moment so I think number one it's fair to say that um, most things are still in plan um, uh, most of our clients are global, a lot of them US based, South America based, several based in, um, in Asia. And we would not be advising anybody right now to come out with an all singing, all dancing climate communication um, for the very practical reason of the fact that it's going to get lost. It is absolutely going to get lost right now. And if, if you actually have an ask involved in your communication, you need to make sure that people are willing to listen to that and act on it. Um, what we are working on is some longer term pieces. Number one around staff engagement. I think Dana was absolutely spot on around this is not the time to ask for help. This is the time to offer it to staff, to offer training, to offer um, uh, insight, to offer um, help in terms of engaging children. We've got some clients which we're working with where we're doing um, uh, sessions, quite significant sessions of coaching with the teens that people have at home who may have had some of their um, aspirations about their university life or their first job not. So a lot of very uh, stuff around helpfulness, particularly around careers and sustainability. We are seeing some, some real desire from the media though for more coverage of this and as Dana said particularly around Earth Day we've got a number of major media platforms be that broadcast media print media Vogue etc Vice are all going to be doing significant co coverage and what they're looking for from companies are very specific iconic activities they don't want to hear about the big overall strategies they don't want to hear about the 2030 commitments and the net zero what they want to hear about is how can you help people right now in their homes live more sustainably so if you have got a, a, a be it a product a service a gizmo that helps people live more sustainably in their homes um, then that's going to be very welcome right now in media so that's interesting. I wonder, do you, is it because do you think there's a certain element of the media wanting to t wanting to talk about something else that needing to put something else on the news agenda? How much do you think is that? Very little of this would be news agenda. So Futera has a partnership with BAFTA, the British Academy for Film and Television Arts, called Planet Placement, which is where we've been working with BAFTA now for a couple of years on embedding sustainability messages, particularly climate messages in non-news media. So in uh, reality TV programs, right. daytime TV, et cetera. Um, the news media agenda is going to be dominated and rightly so by the crisis which we're currently covering. But remember there's a great deal of non-news media. And in fact, one of the things we're finding is that news consumption is not as high as you might expect it uh, to be at the moment. Even though all of us feel like we're watching a lot of news, actually a lot of news channels are, cha are being channeled are being challenged um, but non-news media particularly lifestyle media um, a lot of the things which was appropriate in lifestyle media which is primarily by this this is what the new fashions are this this week and um, this is where to go on holiday all of that is not appropriate right now whereas ways 
that you can help, ways that you can be a good person, ways that you can contribute, ways you can feel better about yourself. Actually, news media, the non-news media, the lifestyle media really wants to cover that. So if you have a solution, particularly for life at home, this is the time to get out there with it because there is an audience and appetite and there's definitely a lot of channels and platforms for it. Great, yeah, and I think it is under that banner of, you know, resilience, adaptation, regeneration, all of those, all of those key banners, anything fit, if you can fit it into those things, it's very appropriate right now, that's what's on top of everyone's mind. And also simply being a good person. Most of us are having a little bit of a morality awakening at the moment in terms of how we interact with others um, and a desire to do good is quite high and there's limited ways that we can do good to others on Corona, many but limited, whereas there are many, many other ways that we can do good in the world and again that desire to do something that contributes to make a difference is very high. I'm aware of the fact we've got five minutes left, so I want to try and get through a couple of other questions right now before um, before we have to sign off. So my um, one, and this is sort of fits into that, the, you know, what we've been talking about. But what are your what are your thoughts? So you know, Dana, you've got obviously everyone's at home now, every, you know, far less business travel. You know, this is you know one of the things that's you know has seen a significant drop inevitably. Do you are you already thinking about at LinkedIn ways in which this can be turned into long term behaviour change and a real sort of transformation in terms of business, how business works? And you know, is that something that you've been considering? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the team has been looking at that both in terms of you know, employee commute and air travel, and we're measuring what these impacts are on our carbon footprint. And, um, you know, obviously this has been launched in a very abrupt way, like 100% stop to everything. And that's not what the environmentalists would like to have happen to solve climate change, especially in the context of um, all of the terrible impacts from COVID on health. But, um, there are, I think it is an opportunity to learn and see, you know, what what types of travel were necessary, what types of travel were not necessary. necessary. It's also a great opportunity for us to be testing out a lot of um, tools that we have had, but haven't maybe been used as much, um, you know, from simple video calls to, um, you know, like LinkedIn live events, things that you can kind of air out there. And so I think that because of the situation, people are learning new ways and they'll be able to tell um, what's been working and what hasn't been working for them. So when we sort of transition out of this, we can see what what was um, worth keeping and what's worth switching back. And um, it's sort of an experimentation moment. And one, I've had a the question come in, another question for you, Dana, which is sort of feeding off that actually, in terms of, you know, what, um have have your overall has your overall strategy for sustainability at linkedin has that have you started to change that already in light of this or you know, where are you in terms of considering what the appropriate strategy is i would say that we have not considered changing our strategy we've had um you know we have our core sustainability goals that are 2030 focused in alignment with microsoft in terms of um carbon negative and actually just in a few minutes, um, Microsoft will be making another announcement about ecosystem services and protection. And those are long strategic goals that we're not going to, to my knowledge, be shifting. I think it's more um, like the topics we talked about earlier, which is sort of how we are engaging employees, how we are communicating, how we are um, thinking forward in those. But it's a little bit of a longer term game, I think. Great, thank you. And Solly, just before we end, we've got uh, two minutes left. So I think it, uh, last question for you is actually back to that same question about how have you had, do you have a sense of what should be happening to make take some of these things that have been forced on us in the most appalling circumstances, but turn them into long-term transformational change? Any thoughts about that? So I think it's really important, as Dana said, that we make it extremely clear, this is not how this was supposed to happen. Um, uh, because one of the things which we do know about enforced behaviour change is that once the force is removed, people tend to not just revert back, but actually go even further. 
So real danger right now of, of assuming that everyone's going to suddenly decide they want to live like this. A great deal of our population are not enjoying living like this at all and implying that this is the right way to solve the climate is going to backfire on us badly. So um, some of the things which I think is really interesting to think about is as, exactly as Dana said, what do you want to keep and what do you want to not? And actually being able to separate it into two really strong lists as a corporate, where have the advantages been, but also where have the challenges been? Um, uh, but personally, I think we're going to have to wait for this to play out. I don't want to take too much of a hot take on behaviour change right now because we're all living it right now. Um, as we see what's happening in China, as we see what's happening as Europe begins to lift, we will be able to see which of these behaviour changes that people have tried, they themselves want to stick to, and which, which ones they don't. For businesses, the great deal of investment they've made into video conferencing specifically might be something that sticks. Um, and perhaps for a few of us who are currently learning to cook, that one might stick to. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that is a, a wonderful way to end of, you know, what we've taken out as a positive of this, each of us individually about, you know, the fact that I am determined to be able to do a crow in yoga by the end of this lockdown, uh, which first of all involves finding an, an abdominal muscle somewhere. Um, I'm sure we're all taking something personally away that we're trying to achieve. Um, but with that, I would like to thank every, both of you. Um, everyone who joined us online both of you for your insight um, and your knowledge and experience which I think has been really helpful I hope everyone else has found it useful and um, just to say to everyone who's listening to us let's continue the conversation you have our contact details there and uh, best of luck to everyone and uh, please you know all stay well and healthy and we'll speak again soon thank you thank, thank you Rebecca thank you.